Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome again. My name is Diallo, and we are doing current events for this Monday, June 14th, 2021. Who would have thought it, huh? 2021? Who would have thought they'd have made this far? What? 2021. Yep. Who would have thought they made this far, huh? That's Hallelujah. So we're going to read out of the East Bay Times, and we're going to see what is going on with this. Let's see. I've known up to the last this long, I wouldn't take them back care of myself. That's a good advice, right? If you know that you're going to last this long, you would take them better care of yourself. I can understand that. That's a good message for younger people, huh? Yep. It's a great message. Let's see. Let's read this one. It's about the 4th of July, which is coming up in about 20 days. It could cost your host $1,000 if you light off illegal fireworks in Oakley. In Oakley. Man. It's not, it's not there. You can't do it then. Well, let's see. Let's find out. It says, to make people think twice before setting off illegal fireworks, the city of Oakley has decided to increase fines to $1,000 and hold social hosts accountable if the pyrotechnics go off on their property. Derek Cole, who represents Oakley as its, contra as its contracted city attorney, said although the city in past years has done outreach campaigns to make residents aware of the rules, fireworks have continued going off in residential neighborhoods. It's really, really hard to enforce because unless you actually see someone like the fireworks and set it off, you can't really cite them, he said. And if they're not the property owner, you really can't just walk up and give them a ticket. Some cities have turned to, to a social concept approach, which Cole said has resulted in better compliance. They, the police, can reasonably determine where fireworks came from, from, uh, from came from, they, the police, can reasonably determine where fireworks came from. You can reasonably, you can reasonably pinpoint the house where it came from, and oftentimes you can see people gathered outside the house. And you see the charred wreckage or remains of the fireworks. He said, and so if they cite the property owner or they cite, or they cite the resident, or they cite the lawful occupant and they hit them with a pretty hard fine, $1,000. They have found that there will, that, that, wait, they have found that that will over, that's a horrible written, that's a horrible sentence written. Jeez. They have found that that will over time achieve compliance. That's terribly written. The city fines have been $100 for the first violation, $250 for the second violation, and $500 for the third violation, and each additional one. The new ordinance approved by the city council last week raises those $1,000 for the first and subsequent offenses and makes property owners, tenants, and hosts liable. They think that's good? They'll start fires, right? Because everything's dry right now. You don't want to start a forest fire. Because remember a couple years ago when they had those fires, you couldn't even see across the street. The smoke was so thick. Oh, yeah. Let's see here. Baby, come back. You heard the car come in. The what? The car. Ah. Let's see here. I wake up our friend call. That's four or five. Here's minutes. one. How you doing? Okay. I got falling asleep. So here's one. Council to weigh use of militarized police equipment in crowd control. So what do you think that means? Using militarized equipment in crowd control. Oh, no, it's about protest. Yeah. This move comes after the revelations of officers' improper tear gas handling. So it says from Oakland, the Oakland Police Department could face additional oversight of its acquisition and use of militarized equipment under a proposed ordinance headed to the city council on Tuesday. 
If approved, the ordinance would regulate the police department's. Man, every time I read, I get I yawn. So if approved, the ordinance would regulate the police department's use of military style equipment, such as armored vehicles, firearms, 50 caliber or greater ammunition. What would you need a 50 caliber firearm for? For crowd control. You know what a 50 caliber cal you know what a 50 caliber a 50 caliber round does to, to a human being? You can't walk around. A 50 caliber round or greater, that will, like one of those will literally shred you in half. Well, you're going to hit four or five of them. Like, oh, that? look what do you need a 50 caliber round you. for? for? Crowd control. <laughs> so military style it's, it's equipment such as armored vehicles, firearms, 50 caliber or greater ammunition, projectile launchers, riot guns used to launch chemical agents, tear gas, and flashbang grenades or other explosives Hmm. Uh, often used to to breach crowds at protests. The ordinance also would require police to submit policies, impact reports, and annual reports about its use or purchase of such equipment to the Oakland Police Commission, a civilian group of, that oversees police department activities. The commission would then make a recommendation to the city council about how the equipment should be used. Well, how do they know? How would the bunch of civilians know how to use the equipment in a police situation. Oakland Vice Mayor Rebecca Kaplan, who was introducing legislation along with the council member Noel Gallo and Dan Kaub. This is Kaub. Sorry, we're keeping you up. <laughs> no, every time I every time I read, even when I read at home, I start yawning when I read. I'm not tired. Does that help on the air? Mm -hmm. Watch it, watch yourself fall. Yep. So Dan Cobb said in a news conference last week, the legislation is necessary to ensure we do not have overuse and inappropriate use of militarized equipment. The proposal comes to the city council days after it was revealed that more than two dozen Oakland police officers are facing discipline for their, for their tactics, including the use of tear gas, against demonstrators following the murder of Minneapolis resident George Floyd by police last spring. So yeah, they're just making it so you can't just shoot people for no reason with tear gas. And that's gonna be a legitimate reason, right? Thank goodness, right? Yeah. Let's see what else we got. I got nothing. You got nothing? <laughs> nothing in my brain. <laughs> got Nathan. Juanita. I got the obituaries right here. Uh, let's see what else we got. It's really not much in the newspaper. We're all going to read the advice column a little bit later. Thank God. Love the advice call with Miss Manners and Miss Amy and Ask Amy. Let's see. Who here likes to hike? I like hiking. Up or down? Both. Which way you wave? Mm -hmm. Alone? Let's see. Keep our body moving and grooving. Yep. Well, landmark Big Sur Trail rises again from the ashes. For generations, it was one of the most popular attractions in Big Sur. Thousands of people every year hiked up the Pfeiffer Fall Trails, a 1.5-mile round-trip route through a redwood, redwood lined stream in Pfeiffer Big Sur State Park, leading to a 60-foot waterfall. But the trail and six of its wooden bridges, stairs, signs, handrails, and, and observation deck were destroyed in the 2008 Basin Complex fire. The landscape has long since recovered, and now a new trail has risen from the ashes after years of backbreaking work, interrupted by floods, more fires, budget shortfalls, the COVID-19 pandemic, and delays. This trail is going to make a lot of people's days, said Marcus Ortega, superintendent of State Park's Big Sur sector, on a recent hike through the Redwood Forest. It's, a kid fr it's kid friendly. You get to see a whole waterfall. You're in the Redwoods, it gives you the full Big Sur experience. Following a $2 million renovation, the new Pfeiffer Falls 
trail will, will, will reopen to the public on Friday. With its stunning rocky coastline, majestic mountains, and deep redwood shredded valleys, Big Sur, the writer Henry Miller once said, is the face of the earth as the creator intended it to look. Oh, you know the guy. That's a good story. Okay. Henry Miller, he? he was a poet. You know him so. All right. Let's see what else we got here. So this is a Supreme Court case. Justices could take Harvard case on race in college admissions. Let's see what that means. This is by Mark Sherman, the Associated Press. With abortion and guns already on the agenda, the conservative-dominated Supreme Court is considering adding a third blockbuster issue, whether to ban consideration of race in college admissions. The justice could say as, as soon as today whether they will hear an appeal claiming that Harvard discriminates against Asian American applicants in a case that could have nationwide repercussions. The case would not be argued until the fall or winter. It would be a big deal because of the nature of the of of college admissions across the country and because of the stakes of having this issue before the Supreme Court, said Gregory Garr, who twice defended at, uh, the University of Texas admiss admissions program before the justices. The presence of three appointees of former President Donald Trump could prompt the court to take up the case, even though it's only been five years since the last decision in a case about affirmative action in higher education. In that Texas case, the court reaffirmed in a four to three decision that colleges and universities may consider race and admission decisions, but they must do so in a narrowly tailored way to promote diversity. The court said in its decision that rejected the discrimination claims of white applicants. Schools also bear the burden of showing why their consideration of race is appropriate. So yeah, what do you think about that? UC Berkeley got sued for the same thing. UC Berkeley got sued because Asian Asian students, Asian Americans, were not get, were getting rejected from the school because they were Asian. So typically, I mean, not typically, um, if you were just to do a blind entry into like Cal Berkeley, the majority of the students that would get in would be Asian because of the work ethic, the goal, all that. A lot of things involved with that, but the, typically that would be it. So they stopped doing that and they would were looking at people's race and rejecting people on that. And they sued and then it was thrown out when Biden came in the office. So. I'm so glad we don't have Trump anymore. Yep. Yep. And my children are black, white, Chinese. Oh, they're a big mix. Yep. All right, let's see. We are all one. Hmm. You hear that Israel got a new coalition? Israel basically got a new president. It's the first time in about eight years they've had a new president. Actually, like 10 years. Is he a good president? Hmm. Nobody knows yet. His name is uh, Neftali Bennett, a former ally of Benjamin Netanyahu, who now replaces him, raises his hand during the Neset session in Jerusalem on Sunday. Hmm. I didn't know actor Ned Beatty died. He was in Deliverance and Network. Was 
he was 83. No wonder. <laughs> no wonder. Well, yeah, that fellow guy who went out to catch the ball. Yeah. Let's see. Really nothing in this paper today. It's just boring paper. It's all about who got shot, who got killed. We don't want to see that. No. See happy stuff, right? Yeah, let's go for it. All right, well, so we'll go to the advice column then. We're going to go for Miss Manners first. So this is about uh, Miss Manners is a is a uh, columnist. And what happens is people, like one of you, would write to Miss Manners with one of your problems. And then she would write back to you and give you uh, an answer or something like that. So this one's called Not Worth Arguing Sometimes. So this is somebody writing into Miss Manners. Dear Miss Manners, my brother and I are on opposite sides of the political spectrum. He is on the left and I am on the right. Listening and trying to understand the other side did nothing for us because we so strongly disagree. After he recently invited me to refute his assertions, I told him that although I could absolutely refute each one of them, I was choosing not to do it anymore. We were going back and forth endlessly with each other uh, with each of us quoting what we believe to be facts, our different sources for the facts were the reason for the disparity. I believe that the mainstream media is undeniably and unapologetically left-leaning rather than being an unbiased source. He agrees with this, but it doesn't change his opinion. While, while I agree more with, while I agree more with the few conservative media outlets, I can concede that they are not always right either. We agree that neither of us was likely to change our political views significantly. I think the acknowledgement of the role of news sources plays play helped us back down from the personal animosity we had been harboring. So this is a very common thing when Trump got in office. You had families that literally split up because one person liked Trump or some certain people like Trump, some people like didn't like Trump. And because they couldn't get to, they couldn't get along, which is amazing to me. They were so divided that they couldn't even get along. They just ended family friendships and friendships and everything. So that's just lazy to me. You, you got to be a way to work through that. Just because somebody has a different political view doesn't mean you can't be friends with them. So let's see what Miss Manners writes back. She writes back, "Dear gentle reader, whatever works for establishing family harmony." and bashing the media left, right, or sideways usually does. Miss Manners is at least pleased that you do so in somewhat even-handed way. So, eh. Next one. Dear Miss Manners, when I met one of the priests at my church, I put out my hand and told him my first name. Since then, he has addressed me by my first name only, though I always address him as father plus his name. Now I realize that I appreciate being addressed with Miss in front of my first name, as many as my younger friends with Southern background do. How can I or can I, after three months, get this younger priest to address me as Miss plus my first name? Well, you ask him. <laughs> you say, hey, can you? Please. Uh, that's, uh, Please say Miss. We're going somewhere now. Uh, Let's not wake everybody up. Kind of and all right, so now we're going to go to the advice column. Ask Amy. So again, this is from a, a reader writing into Amy. Dear Amy, I am a married mother of three young adults and grandchildren to three young grandmother to three young children. All my life, I've taken care of people. I raised children for 10 years alone while continuing to work full time. I have a very loving, supportive husband. We have, we have a home, a cottage, and an investment property, which my husband and I physically and financially take care of ourselves. Our adult, our adult daughter and son-in-law don't take any interest in helping us, even though they live in the investment property at a very reduced rent so that they could save money for their own home. Three years later, they have saved nothing and don't work regularly. They buy whatever they want, but can't support themselves. We continue to help with babysitting and by helping to ease their financial burden. Last night, while visiting my grandchildren, I brought along some essential items for the house, for the household, and treats for the kids. 
The kids always express gratitude. Their parents never do. While I was there, my, grand, my son-in-law went out for coffee, bringing it back for my daughter and himself, but I couldn't believe it. No one ever offered me so much as a glass of water. I left the visit feeling so used, unappreciated, overwhelmed, and heartbroken. I don't know what to make of this rudeness. I cry myself. I cry by myself in frustration. This has been going on for years now, but I did not raise my children to be so rude and unappreciative. Well, that's pretty bad, huh? Well, it's good that he didn't raise the kids' children better. Yeah, but they didn't even offer her a water or coffee or anything. Man. So let's see what Miss Amy says. Dear Steen, I beg to differ. You are obviously generous in giving a giving person, but you did raise your children to be rude and unappreciative. Uh -huh. <laughs> not only do you not... <laughs> Not only do you not react or respond when these adults are rude to you, but you actually enable and subsidize them. <laughs> when you don't express your feelings directly to the people inspiring them, you are being dishonest. And so, rather than, mere, than merely assert your own human right to have feelings and express them, you are crying into your pillow and then blaming these adults for not being able to read you. By subsidizing their rent, you have created a false economy. They don't put their earnings toward housing costs because you're doing it. They go out for coffee instead of brewing it at home and don't offer it to you because why not? Okay. They can afford it and you are visit invisible. You need to be under you need to understand who would benefit the most right now from your generosity, and that is you. Stop impeding their progress by providing so much for them. Start valuing yourself enough to not to be do a doormat. The pandemic has forced many families to pull together, live together, and help one another out, but your situation was not brought about by the necessity of a worldwide emergency. When you change, when, when you change, they will change. Why? Because they will have to. That's a good one, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, they have to change. Ooh. We all have to change. That's true. <laughs> so, all right, a couple more. We're going to finish off with... Today in history and news of the weird. 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 Let's it's see. Weirder here. and weirder. I know. Yeah, here. Here. All right. So we do today in history. So again, today is June fourteenth, two thousand twenty-one. We're going to go back in history to 1777, June 14th. 1777? So June 14th, 1777. The Second Continental Congress approved the design of the original American flag. That was in 1777. Wow. Who was the lady who designed the American flag? What was her name? I know you know. I'll have to talk to my wife. What was her name? Betsy Ross. Nice, Bill. Betsy Ross. All right, now we're going to go to June 14th, 1911. The British ocean liner RMS Olympic set out on its maiden voyage from New York, arriving one week later. The ship captain was Edward John Smith, who went on to command the ill-fated RMS Titanic the following year. And we're supposed to follow this guy that lost well, he's dead. Why are we following? Because we're reading history. So, June 14th, 1943. You were around then. Yes. The Supreme the U.S. Supreme Court ruled six to three in West Virginia State Board of Education versus Barnett that public school students could not be forced to salute the U.S. flag. June 14th, 1993. President Bill Clinton nominated Judge Ruth Bader Ginsburg to serve on the Supreme Court. What was so significant about that? She didn't No, she was a woman, obviously. So she was the first woman on the Supreme Court. Okay. I think, yeah. No, she wasn't the first one. No, Fascinating. But she passed away um, about a year ago. Oh. Yeah. You know how old she was? She was like 90. 
She was old. She was still doing her job all the way to the end. That was your girlfriend? No, that was a Supreme Court justice. Oh, okay. All right. Boy George is 60 today. That's oh. the singer. You're doing a good job today. You know, it's, it's, it's former President Donald Trump's birthday today. <laughs> he Donald turned, Trump. He turned 75. News of the weird. So weird things that have happened. You're at the right place, that's for sure. <laughs> and this is this is what this one's titled: Well Healed Crocs. So like Crocs went on thing. sale less than 20 years ago, but they're already experiencing a renaissance, according to the Independent. And for the spring 2022 season, Crocs are getting a crossover boost from luxury fashion house Balenciaga. Balenciaga. New models feature a stiletto heel, which looks more like a Lego piece under the traditional green and black perforated upper. The new model may cost as much as $1,000, but social media isn't on board. One tweet called them actual night, an actual nightmare. Another commenter said she is irrationally angry. So Crocs are a type oh, of shoes. Right there. Yeah, Crocs are a type of shoes like sandals, and somebody put heels on them. Ugh, terrible. So thank you, ladies and gentlemen, for joining me for thank current you. events on this Monday, June 14th. Again, my name is Diallo. Have a great, safe day, and away we go. Yeah, boy. That's great.